Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and I'm back with the G-Mini pump with the built-in controller. Today, we're gonna look at wiring options for this guy. All of these G-Mini pumps are DC powered, and they are only offered with this connector that we call the CPC. And all of the units with controller have the option to also be connected to a remote manual run device, or sometimes we just call it the push button, but it actually has an LED light on there. So it has four wires connected to it to give you that remote manual run switch and the LED indication. So it gets a little tricky to wire it. But before we get into that, let's look at the simplest way to wire up a G-Mini with a controller. If your reason for choosing the G-Mini is economy, then maybe you don't want to spend the money on the remote manual run device. And in that case, you may just want to use the three wire cable that we sell as one of the options. The three wire cable includes a green wire. So you actually only need two wires and the green is not one of them. It's an additional ground wire and because this is a DC unit, the black is gonna be your negative ground and you don't need a separate ground. So speaking of that, people do get confused by the black and white because it looks kind of like what you'd have for AC wiring and in, in AC you have black death because that's your hot wire and then white is the neutral. That's not the case for this. Black is going to be your frame ground, which means the white is your positive voltage. This is the one that you're gonna hook up to a fuse, and then that fuse is typically gonna be connected to ignition power. So this is the simple way to wire it, and it's pretty straightforward. You just hook up to a frame ground, and you hook up to your fused ignition power. So then the other optional cable is this five wire cable. We have the same CPC connector on here, but then there are five different wires. And now we still have a white, but then there's also a red. If we only want to hook up two power, let's say you ordered this cable, but you didn't order the push button and you really ordered this cable by mistake, it doesn't really matter because now you can just clip off the wires you don't need. And in this case now, white is no longer your positive power for the ignition line. You're gonna still have black as your frame ground, but now red is your ignition power that again, you wanna be connected to a fuse and have that fuse then go to your ignition power. So that's if you're just gonna do a two wire connection with the five wire cable. But if we wanna wire up that push button, then it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. One thing that might look familiar is if you've ever wired up an electric grease jockey pump, it's gonna look a lot like that because it actually follows the same diagram. It does not wire the same way as a G3 Max or Pro or SP. All of those are a different wiring schematic. So now let's take a closer look at what we do for the G-Mini with the remote manual run device or push button. An important detail when it comes to these push button kits is voltage. Because the G-Mini is available as a 12 volt or a 24 volt pump, you have to specify if you want 12 volts or 24 volts. Same thing with these buttons. When you look on the side of it, you can get up real close and see that it says 24 volts. Guess what? This pump is a 12 volt, so this is the wrong button. Gonna set that aside. So let's look at this one instead. There we go, that one says 12 volts. So now we can go ahead and hook this up. These kits include a sticker, it also has another sticker for showing you what the lights mean, the way the different colors and flashing behavior, what that actually means. And then there's also these four spade connectors that mate to the prongs on the back of the button. So you can just get your favorite crimping tool and crimp those on. I'm not gonna demonstrate that right now, but let's actually look at what wire goes where. Now we've got our 12 volt button. We've got our black mark on number three. We've got the right cable with the five wires and we've got a retaining nut here. And I wanna stop and point out this detail. We're gonna be pushing this cable in from the back of our little pretend panel here. That means the nut needs to be on the cable already before we slide this through. One other thing I want you to note is that I actually separated the red and black wires here because we're gonna assume that the red is gonna be getting wired to our ignition power. And again, we have that here on this wire with the, the fuse holder back there. And then I have my little pretend frame rail over here that we're gonna be getting our 
frame ground from. So this black is gonna go to a frame ground. What we need then is another piece of black wire to be the frame ground. And we can see here, I've put my little crimped on blade terminal on this other black piece of wire and then I've crimped on the terminals to the white, green, and orange as well. So now we can start putting this together. We wanna have a little extra protruding here so that we have room to work. And then I'm gonna feed my other black wire through. Now we've got all four wires where they need to be. You could also hook the black wire onto the button first and then feed it in through the front since it's not connected to the main harness. Oops, I put that on the wrong one. So we wanna make sure that's black. And also notice that these are kind of a D shape and you wanna put the flat that, so that it's gonna be facing the wire next to it. And because the black is sort of on a corner here, we know that there's going to be a wire next to it here from our wiring diagram. So we're going to be putting this flat towards the side there. Black and orange make a circuit. So orange goes across from black and then green goes next to black. So here again, we wanna make sure the flat side is facing the correct way. There, we're good on this side. And now the last one is our white. And that's gonna go right here across from the green. So now all the wires are hooked up correctly. It's not that much work to undo the nut. And here even I've got to remember to put my black through this nut. Okay, so now I'm just gonna slide the nut onto the threads and spin it on. Get it finger tightened here. It doesn't need to be super tight because this is already firm just like that. So if you can get a wrench back there, more power to you, but I usually just finger tighten these guys and I don't get complaints about that. So now we wanna hook up our power wires. First, we're gonna just bring these together because even in the real world, you might actually use the same grounding stud that you find under the panel. I put these two separate eyelets on because it is possible that you'll have this ground wire somewhere in a completely different place and then this wire will be closer to wherever the button is mounted. But since you're running all the wires together initially, it's hit or miss on how that ends up going. And then I'm gonna hook up my power right now because I don't actually have my ignition on. And in this case, I don't have my power supply plugged into the wall. But in the real world, you wanna have the ignition off. So now let's go ahead and plug in our pump. Okay, everything's hooked up. We're ready to turn it on and see what happens. And I'm gonna move to a slightly different angle here so you can see the color of the button a little better. The pump has power, so we know that at least the black and red are correct. And let's see what happens when we push the button now. The button turns green and the pump is counting down from five minutes. I just have this set up in time mode and so it's defaulting to five minutes. I'm gonna let this run now because there's still no grease in this reservoir. And this way we can see our low level alert and alarm. So here's the alert. Now the camera's making it look like this light is flashing. With the naked eye, it looks like a steady amber light. And we also have this amber alarm light lit up to tell us that this is our pre-alarm or alert mode. And it's gonna run for a few more minutes before it actually goes to the full on low level alarm and stops the pump. So I'll cut away to that here, but I'll just be letting this pump run until we go to an alarm and then we can see what happens on the push button. And that is a low level alarm. It happened about three minutes after the amber light came on. And if you watched my advanced programming video already, you'll know that you can configure that three minutes to as low as two minutes and up to five minutes. But the default is three minutes. So three minutes after it turned amber, the button turned red, just like the alarm light on the display. So that's all there is to it. This is not super hard, but it's a little bit tricky because it's different than a G3. 
but it is the same as an electric grease jockey. So if you're doing an electric grease jockey on a tractor and putting one of these on a trailer, it'll be nice and consistent for you. Hopefully this makes the job a little bit easier for you. If you have any questions about the G-Mini, its accessories, or any other Graco product, please reach out and contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.